Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna take a look at the Arteza Metallic watercolors. Now I've had these for probably about two months and um, I want to use them a little bit more before I did a review on them. I had, um, I originally swatched them out and played with them a bit and had, uh, had an opinion on them, but I wanted to just kind of use them a little bit more and um, see what I thought after that. So they come in a cardboard sleeve and actually it's on kind of a larger blister pack, at least the one I got had like a, like a larger blister pack type packaging and then it had this box and then uh, there was a water brush as well. I don't think I have the water brush in the set with me. Um, it's got a nice high quality tin, uh, no rust at all on the pans and they are in clear half pans. There is 24 colors here and a variety of mostly um, metallic-y pearlized colors and some have a little bit of a glitter flash to them. So it's a nice overall collection of colors. It comes with two swatch cards, a black and a white, and I'm just going to fold it back here so I just show you the Arteza watercolors. Um, so here you can see the um, the colors on black, they show up really well, they're nice and reflective, and then you can see the colors on white. You can definitely see um, that not all the colors, or some of the colors will look very similar on black, where they look a little more unique on white. I just kind of tip that. That's fairly common in metallic or pearl watercolors, but I just wanted to make note of that. Like those three colors there, the white, silver, and black, they don't look almost identical on black, but they're three different tones. The the different pinks, these three pinks here, they look different on the white, but they look pretty much the same. And you'll see that a lot. Uh, I see it a lot in greens, uh, but the greens actually do look fairly unique here on the black and the white, but your blues, all the blues actually look quite similar on the white as well. So um, there's 24 colors, but I don't feel like you get 24 different varieties on black. It's a little bit better on white, but generally if you're using these, you're using them on black. Now something else I always also wanted to check because I didn't, I thought these felt almost gouache, like they, they weren't, they were more pearly than really metallic. So I wanted to swatch out the Arteza metallic gouache just to see if they were, how similar they were. Cause I know a lot of you guys have the 60 set of the Arteza gouache and that 60 set comes with 12 metallic colors or you might have purchased the, the metallics on their own. Um, so I wanted to compare that to see if it was worth getting the um, the metallic watercolors if you already have the gouache. Now the gouache is going to be opaque on um, black as well as the metallics, but the opacity of the gouache almost has more of a chalky and pearly feeling to it um, versus the on the watercolor, it's a little bit more reflective, I think. However, um, I think I would weigh how much you're going to use it. If you already have the metallic gouache, are you going to use it enough to justify having a whole pan of the metallics? Because this set is, um, I haven't looked recently, but it was, they were released at $39.95 on Arteza. Amazon prices fluctuate quite a bit. They've been really high on a lot of art supplies during the pandemic. So I would definitely check both places if you're considering purchasing. Um, but any of the most of the metallic sets are running around fifty dollars for you know comparable um, metallic watercolor half pan sets of twenty four. Um, these last I checked were around forty. So like if we compare a couple same toned colors, like this is the gold in the um, in the watercolor. That's the gold in the in the gouache, very similar for those two colors. But if you look at like the whites and the silvers and the blacks, they're much more chalky and pearly in the gouache and much more shiny in the um, in the watercolor. Of course, if you were making something that you wanted to photograph, you'd probably have, a, you'd get a better result with the metallic gouache than with the metallic watercolor. The metallic watercolor really shines if you've got something that you're gonna hold in your hand, like a greeting card or a bookmark. Um, on a painting, if you're gonna frame it under glass, you lose a lot of that metallic ability, even if you're doing it on black. Now I did a, just a quick 15 minute painting of this pineapple on, um, on Legion black watercolor paper and it's kind of neat. I know if I put it behind glass though I would totally lose that effect but it was really fun to experiment with and if you're gonna have something where you know it's gonna be movable, it's gonna be handleable, I think it would be a really nice use for it. Um, but for fine art metallics the the uh, it can be a little limited just because once you put that glass barrier in there it, it does kind of 
take away from it. Although I do like some metallic gold ink in the backgrounds of watercolors. It's up to you. You know, you use your judgment, figure out what you would use it for, and determine whether it's a product that you'd actually use. Uh, I think this is going to appeal more to um, sketchbook artists because, you know, you're flipping through the sketchbook, you're going to get that wow of the shimmer versus hanging on a wall where you might not, it might not be able to catch a light just right. So it's just something to think about there. Okay, so um, I'd been a little spoiled with metallic watercolors, I have to say. Um, I'm going to compare these with a, a similar looking brand that, um, to be honest, I prefer, but they are a little bit more expensive. Um, now, my favorite metallic watercolors at the moment are the Paul Rubens set of 24. And um, the Tin Wise, very similar here except this one's pink and the Arteza is black and it has a sticker on it, which I think you could probably remove if you didn't want it. I usually will keep the stickers on my tins just because I have so many black tins this size. It helps me identify them. Um, very similar looking set, uh, but I will say I think the colors are a little bit more reflective in the Paul Rubens set. And it almost looks like the pans might be a little smidgen larger, but that's, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty neg negligible. Um, but as far as the palettes go, this one has just a different indent section on there on the wing. This one has like 12 wells. That one's got like six larger ones. But let's look at the, at the comparison of the reflectability of the paints and the color colorway. Um, now, to be fair, I use the included swatch card that came with the Arteza set. The Paul Rubens didn't have a black swatch card, so I just used cardstock. But the uh, the paper that Arteza sent was pretty smooth, so it should be a pretty fair representation. If you look at the greens, you get more reflection. Well, it's probably really hard to tell on camera. So it probably is fairly no nominal, but I do notice that I get a lot more flash of color and reflection on the Paul Rubens versus the Arteza. These are the Paul Rubens with a little leaf shape things. Um, there are some very similar colors, uh, but you get like four of these kind of really pretty blue-purple colors, and there's one in there. Um, I'm trying to find ones that match pretty closely. You know, there are quite a few similar matches, but like when you look at those two, those look very similar in tone, but this one's got way more glitter to it. The Paul Rubens has a little more flash and uh, and I, I prefer that. Of course, it's up to you. I do feel like these colors look a little bit more unique on black, although there's like, you know, several golds that look very similar. But like on the white of the Paul Rubens, let's look at that. Actually, no, I don't think the Paul Rubens even came with a swatch card. I had to make both of these. Um, you can see them a little bit more distinctly on the white than you can on the black. So these are both Paul Rubens that I'm showing you right now. I do have a watercolor showdown on my blog with scans. I don't obviously have this brand new Arteza one because I recently got that and I did that post last year. But um, let's look at the white swatches. So those are both Paul Rubens. That's Paul Rubens versus Arteza on black. And this is Paul Rubens versus Arteza on white. On white, I don't notice as big of a difference in the colors, but um, but there is some. I mostly notice it in the reflection on some of the colors that, that Paul Rubens just packs a little bit more of a punch. Um, especially when it hits the when it hits the light, do you notice like it's almost like there's more color. There's I feel like the mica is colored as well as the um, the base watercolor that's in there. It's got like more dyes or something in it. It just has a more intense color on both white and black. On on white, these remind me of the Twinkling H2Os, which I really liked, but they never really stood up on black, but the Paul Rubens ones also stand up on black. So I prefer the Paul Rubens ones. I think they're a little bit nicer. They're a little more expensive, but um, how many sets of watercolors, metallic watercolors, are you going to want to have on hand? You're probably going to want to pick the one that meets your needs and your budget the most. So that's why I wanted to put that in there. And another contender that I wanted to share, and I also want to see if there's any rust apparent on this palette because... Not really. Let me see. I don't really see any rust on on that palette. Just some grime from from painting. Um, and I also want to compare it against the new Alta New watercolors because I have recently reviewed those metallic watercolors. I'm kind of afraid to open this up because a couple weeks after I did my review, I noticed I was getting some rust, and um, I don't. Yeah, I've got some rust on those on those pans. It's kind of that's kind of unfortunate. Hopefully, I don't think it would affect the paint just because it's on the metal, but yeah, you, I'll take this out so you can see. It's like it didn't get a good coating of, um, I should probably just take out the paint and give it a coating of, of, uh, 
of clear spray paint, but you can see here some rust developing there. Um, and, but if it gets in the pans, I guess that might cause a problem. It might oxidize the, the... Well, I don't know if it could. If it's mica, it shouldn't oxidize. But if there's metallic pigments in there, it might. I don't know. But um, now, this is kind of unique because it's got the larger pans. It has fewer colors, which I don't think is a huge deal because um, if you look at how many colors are similar on the black, um, I'd probably rather have larger pans and fewer colors. And this, you get 14 full pans, which would be equivalent to 28 half pans. And these are these other two sets of 24 half pans. Um, so there's something else to consider. But I also think the reflectability on the Alta new ones are much brighter. The colors are crisper, sharper. I get a much more opaque coverage. Um, now these could be fairly small differences. I mean, you're really not going to go through that much metallic paint, I don't think, so you might as well pick the set that really gives you the bang for your buck. I think the the Alta new one was around $40, too, so I think it's priced about the exact same as um, as the as the Arteza, a little bit cheaper than the Paul Rubens. Of course, prices are subject to change. This is when I, I check the prices usually when I first get the product, and I don't... Um, and I don't often check back. And keep in mind that all of these sets that I'm showing you today were sent to me for review. So I didn't buy any of these. Um, and this is my honest and unbiased review. But I do want you to know that in case you think it might um, influence my review. I don't think it does, but... Uh, but, you know, I want you to have that information. The Alta News have such a nice, bright, crisp color. And um, all the colors are quite unique. I feel their gleam is very similar to the Paul Rubens. They don't do the, the glittery colors. Like, Paul Rubens has a couple glittery colors versus just metallic or pearl, which is kind of nice. I do like that effect. Um, but, you know, you see this, these unique colors on the black, which I think is quite important because that's how you're probably going to use your metallics. And um, I just think that's a, that's probably one of the most impactful ways to use them. So as far as the Arteza set, do I recommend them? Um, yeah, I recommend them. I think, you know, they're they're less money than the Paul Rubens. Um, if you want to stick with a brand, I know a lot of folks like to stick with a brand. Arteza has been very popular lately. Um, and they do carry quality products. I feel like they're a strong, like, bridge between a student grade and a professional grade with most of their products. Um, I like their gouache an awful lot. Probably their gouache is my favorite product they offer. I also really like their watercolor pencils. Um, I feel like their products are quite solid. I think with the metallic watercolors, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with them. They're fine. They're better than a lot, but there are a few brands out there right now that I think beat them in this category for about the same price. So I say, you know, if, if you're looking for some metallic watercolors, if the other brands are too expensive or difficult to find, I know Arteza does ship to many countries, so they might be a better buy for you wherever you live. I would say, like, if you were going to rate it on a scale of 1, 1 to 100%, um, 100 being like, you know, fine tech. I've never tried fine tech, so I can't, you know, I've heard those are just like the best of the best or Colero, I think is their, their, another one of their trade names, um, or Paul Rubens being 100 and like maybe down at one being like, you know, crazy art or something like that. And maybe Niji being around, you know, 30, I would give these a, like a score of like 75. I don't know if that makes it any easier to tell whether or not to, uh, to purchase these. If you like the black tin, if you like the the simple packaging, um, but as far as the paint goes, that would be my that would be my third choice after um, after the the Altenew and Paul Rubens. These were very similar to are the artsy ones. If you want to, I would I would rate them very close to the artsy line of um, of metallic watercolors. And I don't have those down here right now because my daughter is using them. But um, I want to compare them against the Paul Rubens anyway and the Altenew because those are very easy to find and very popular right now. And just to give you a, um, a reasonable a reasonable comparison. So yeah, they're not bad. They're not my favorite, but they'll get the job done. They're just, um, I just don't find them to be as as bright and colorful. They they do reflect, they do stand out on, on the uh, the black paper, but they don't have that saturation of pigment that I really look for when I'm looking for a metallic watercolor. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this review. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it, and if you have any questions, you can post them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.